to our channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a sit down video and fully talk about everything that happened with me having surgery, to being put in the hospital, and how it started, and everything. I just wanted to sit down and explain everything from start to finish and tell you guys all what happened because in the second hospital when I was in the hospital for a second time I really did not get to vlog like I wanted to because there was always either a nurse or a doctor or somebody in my room and I didn't get to vlog the experience and everything that fully went on like I really wanted to. So I figured in today's video, that's what I'm gonna do is talk about everything from start to finish and fill you guys in on how this started and everything in between. So let's get started. So back in, I guess about the second week of September, I started hearing a ringing in my ear. It started out like a ringing in my ear and then it turned into a heartbeat in my ear. I have always, since I was a real little bit prone to getting ear infections, like if the wind had fallen out outside and I'm out in it all day, I will end up with an ear infection. I'm just, for whatever reason, I am prone to ear infection. So the seasons are changing here in Kentucky from, it was at the time it was changing from summer to fall. So I thought it was seasonal allergies. Like I was putting, like I was blaming everything in the world why it was. And it, about the third week of September, it started getting really bad. Like when I get up to like do housework or play with the kids or anything that was a strenuous activity, the like harder my heart would be, the louder it would get. And the only time I really like fully got relief from it was when I was asleep. That was the only time. I didn't hear it because I was asleep. So about the fourth week of September, I had just had enough like I had had enough and of course I googled my symptoms which is obviously as we all know is a horrible mistake and we all have we all have done it it's just human nature you've got something wrong first thing you do is you have a phone at your hand you get on google and I, this is what's wrong with me why is this happening we are all at fault for it at one time or another so that's what I done and like all of these horrible things come up I'm like oh my gosh you know why did I do this and blah 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 so anyhow it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and by the end of the fourth week fourth week of September I really knew that something was not right at all I had I got up that morning and I had just had enough like I I knew it was not good and then I, my family has high blood pressure we have a history of high blood pressure in our family so I thought maybe it is my blood pressure but at every doctor's appointment that I've ever been to my blood pressure has always been good great you know so I'm like I knew I was under stress at the time with us moving the kids were way behind in their schoolwork and just there was just so much on my shoulders. I thought maybe my blood pressure is high and maybe I could go to a clinic and they can give me something to help it and that would be it. So anyhow, that morning that I got up and decided to go to the clinic, when I got out there, there was a long wait like the receptionist could not even confirm how long I was going to have to wait. So she sent me back out to his car and which if you watch the vlog back you will see me sitting in the clinic, the parking lot in the car. When they never did call me back, like ever called me back and like I just started getting worried and I knew something was quite not right. So I decided to just go ahead and make my way to the emergency room because I thought if something is very wrong and the clinic cannot take care of it, they quite possibly will send me to the emergency room. Anyhow, so 
So I thought I'll just go ahead and save myself from sitting here and waiting who knows how long and go to the emergency room. So anyhow, I get to the emergency room and immediately the nurse is like, yeah, this is not right. You should not have been hearing this for this amount of time. There's definitely something going on that needs to be looked at. I'm like, aha, I knew. So anyhow, I sat there and I had, I can't tell you how many doctors from how many specialties come in and see me. They had threw every diagnosis that some of them I'd heard of, some of them I had not heard of at me. And the one of them that I had heard of was Bell's Palsy. I have known several people to have it. I knew, I knew what it was about. So anyhow, they didn't want to diagnose me with anything until they had blood work back and they wanted to send me to a CT scan. That's when the diagnosis was confirmed. So they sent me, I sat there forever, waiting for a CT, they were backed up and it, it was just very chaotic in the hospital. It was very loud. I wasn't even in the typical ER. I was in what was called the overflow ER due to the coronavirus being such so rampant around in our area. They are like have different ERs set up and it, it was just pure chaos. That's all I can say. It was pure chaos. So anyhow, they took me to a CT scan. They done. I can't tell you how many scans they done it with contrast, without contrast, and all of this. So I was sitting there, I was getting very wor worried because I knew the kids were at home with the babysitter and I didn't know how much longer I was going to be. At this point, I had been in the ER, I know, a good five, six hours at this point before they come in and fully told me what was going on. The doctor come in and told me, he asked me all of these questions and one of the questions was, have you ever had a bad blow to your head? I'm like, I sat there thinking and I'm like, yes I have. I was two years ago, the kids and I were, was in a very serious car accident where our car flipped and I've had other like minor accidents but this car accident in particular my goodness um sorry for the sounds outside it's a beautiful day here and there's a lot of people outside but anyhow i said yes i have been in a traumatic car accident i said i was diagnosed with a very bad concussion and i have whiplash and it, it was you know horrible you know i told them everything and I said, why are you asking me this? Because it, it was scaring me, it was freaking me out. And he said, I'm not gonna tell you what I found until our head of neuro, and I'm like, oh gosh, neuro, brain, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, kind of freaked me out. Until the head of neuro comes in and talks to, until we sit down and then we will talk to you and fully tell you everything. I said, okay. Let me ask you this. I said, I have three kids at home with a babysitter. I said, am I going, how much longer am I going to be here? He said, honey, you're not leaving the hospital. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Time out, hold up. I said, I'm not. He said, no, honey. He said, no, you, it, you will possibly be here a couple of days. I said, oh my goodness, that's okay. I said, I need to get my family on alert. I said, my family, my mom at this point had no idea I was in a UK hospital. I, she had no idea. So I called my mom and um, I told her what was going on. She started freaking out. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. I don't know what's wrong, but here's what I do know. And so immediately, she, it was about nine o'clock at this point. It was very late. So immediately she threw, her clothes on and her and my dad got in the car and drove down here to get the kids and to relieve my babysitter. So anyhow, it was about 30 minutes after the doctor had come in and started talking to me. 
the head of Nero Kabean, and he's the one that done my last surgery, and I love him. Absolutely love this man. He's very good at what he does, and he's just a wonderful person in general. So he comes in, and he sits down, and he just throws it out. And what had happened was, I had had a, it was almost a brain aneurysm right here in the side of my face. And he said, I'm glad you come in. He said, if you waited possibly another day or two, he said, you would have gone blind. I'm like, oh my Lord, you know, I was freaking out. I'm saying, mom, I got three kids, you know, I want to see my baby, you know, finish growing up. And, you know, I was freaking out. I was crying. And so what had happened was my carotid artery, which is the main artery in your neck that supplies your brain, blood, and oxygen, oxygenated blood, had, was dissecting. And not only was it dissecting, but it was narrowed 50%. And he said, I want to do an angio and in the morning, bright and early in the morning, and he said, get a better pictures of what's going on. So I stayed in the hospital that night, the very next morning, bright and early, they come and got me. They done an angiogram. I stayed in the hospital two nights for them to watch out, or watch me real closely, because at this point, I could have had a stroke, an aneurysm, like, there are so many things that could have happened. So they watched me for two nights, make sure my blood pressure was all right, and making sure that all of this was good. That morning, they done the aneurysm, or the angio, and I had to lay flat for four hours, and that was the hardest four hours of my entire lifetime. Laying flat, not moving, is hard. So, it, it's hard enough not moving, but when they tell you you can't move and you don't need to move, it's real hard. So anyhow, they do the angiogram, they come down, or the angioplasty, I'm not sure is the correct term, and he comes down and talks to me and he said, just as I suspected, your carotid artery is dissecting, it's narrow, and he, drew us a picture, my mom and I a picture, and it was absolutely horrible. He said, I want, he said, I wanted to put in the stent now, but he said, here's why I did. He said, I feel like you would have a better chance of the surgery be some, being successful if I place you on a regimen of aspirin and a blood thinner for about two weeks prior to the surgery. That way it would give your stent a longer life. Fan, so you don't have to have it replaced. I said, okay, you know, whatever. Just, you know, I'm a single mom, you know, like. So anyhow, he, I stayed in the hospital two nights. They started me on the aspirin and the blood theater. Sent me home and the very next week they called me. They started doing all the blood work and the surgery workup and all of that. And I went in the hospital and we went for, we packed for a couple days. I had no idea how long they were going to keep me. So this surgery, I was fully sedated. They put me out and put a breathing tube down me because they wanted me very still. When I had the first angioplasty or angiogram, I was kind of loopy. They made me kind of loopy and that was about it and this time they put me like completely out i did not realize because i asked them they said the surgery so my mom would know how long the surgery would be and they said usually about an hour to hour and a half i was in the i would they operated on me for four and a half hours this time that's the longest he said he has ever worked on somebody and he said what, was hap what happened was, not only had that one spot got worse, but it created another path and it was essentially bleeding into my brain. So I had a fistula, the second surgery, I had a fistula, which is when my artery had 
fully dissected into a vein and created like a new opening and like it was it was forever long so i had this time i had a brain aneurysm i had a fistula and the narrowing had worsened so he fixed the brain aneurysm and the fistula and all of this. I have two very large stents. One of them is like right here and the other one is like right here. So he put in two stents and he had went out and talked to my mom and told my mom because my mom at this point was very worried because we did not expect a four hour surgery. Like did not expect this. So he come out, talked to my mom, told my mom what had happened and why I was in so long. And it was just him making sure that I was not going to throw a clot and have a stroke, which he was trying to prevent. And after about four and a half hours, I come out of surgery. I woke up. The next couple days were kind of a blur. There were so many people in and out of my room checking on me. And I felt absolutely horrible. I felt like somebody had run over me with a truck, with a semi truck. And today, which is October what, 20th, I think, I am just now. No, is it October 20th? I don't know, it's up in October. <laughs> I've lost track. But I am just now feeling like a decent human being. Like I am, I'm black and blue where I'm on. So many blood thinners. I uh, have bruises like all over me. I'm afraid to go out. I'm afraid people will think I have been beat. I have not. It's just due to all of the tubes and wires and everything they had on me in the hospital. My leg, my left leg and the growing area is completely black. It's pretty black and purple. It's very sore, very, very sore, which is why I'm kind of sitting kind of odd because I can't like put pressure like on my left side because it hurts so bad. Um, but as of today, I am very, very grateful to be here, sitting here talking, not only you guys, but sitting here able to actually physically see. I'm grateful to, for any ache and pain that I have. I will never complain again. No, I no longer hear the ringing or thumping in my ear, which is absolutely completely aggravating it was so aggravating here in that like every second of every day like it had almost took my hearing away in my left ear i can now hear so the surgery was deemed successful thank you god i have so much <laughs> praise and like I could sit here and cry how grateful I am to be sitting here able to take care of my babies once again. But anyhow, that is pretty much it of my story. It's crazy how one heartbeat in my ear turned again to not one but two surgeries and two stents put in I never thought that I would have all this happen to me. I'm not even in my 40s yet. And all of this is happening. I'm like, this is a sign how the rest of my life is going to go. Like, oh my goodness. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I want to say this, that if you have a gut, like, tell if your gut is telling you or you're... you're like there's just something telling you and bugging you about your health, please, by all means, go get it checked out. No matter how little or how big it is, it could turn into something big. I never thought a heartbeat in my ear, like I said, would turn in 
to something so horrible and could have took my life or took my sight or my hearing or whatever. So please, if you need a checkup or if you got something wrong, go get checked out because I'm so glad that I listened for once in my life, listened to my gut that told me that something was wrong. So listen to it because it could say potentially save your life. It did mine. But anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, stay tuned to the next two videos. I've got a fat or not fat fit fun, a college box that I'm finally getting to the opening. I can't wait. I haven't peeked. I want to peek. So stay tuned to that and a single swag box. Stay tuned to the story on that, which was a mess. But anyhow, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the love and comment that you all have put on the videos. I so appreciate them and love them. I love reading your guys' comments and they make my day when I see comments on their not only our channel but our videos i appreciate them i try to get to them i haven't got to them as fast this time due to kind of being under the weather and everything but anyhow thank you guys so much for watching and like always we will see you guys in another video bye guys <music>